Uh, let's get started. Let's see. We uh, we have everybody here. We've got Pete, Nino, me, Paul, Rich. So we, we're we're all together now. So um, I will call this meeting of the regular meeting of the Bethel Public Utilities Commission to order for Monday, August third, twenty twenty. And uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And Paul's got the flag. All right. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right, first order of business, public input. Uh, I, I think, uh, let's see, Tim and Mike are on the agenda, so I don't think you guys have public input, correct? No. Yep, okay. Correspondence, uh, I don't think we have anything late. All right, so we'll move on to minutes of the previous meeting. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of July 20th, 2020. So move. Moved by Rich. Second. Um, seconded by uh, Dino. Any, uh, any changes, any comments, corrections? In hearing none, uh, I want to try your minds. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That carries. Financials. Uh, don't have a report tonight, today. This that will come up in the middle of the month, but I'll put a motion on the floor that we uh, approve invoices for PUC approval. Uh, the document uh, dated regular meeting August 3rd, 2020, in the amount of $403,243.19. Is there a second? I haven't received any. Um, it's You're in it's, the email. It's in the email. Can you can you look at well out? Was there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, second by uh, by Dino. Paul, are you able to bring that up? From no, Dan? but go ahead. I'll abstain, so. Okay. All right, so there's four items. National Water Main Company cleaning, $8,341. I'm rounding a little bit. Uh, DN Tanks, this is the biggest one, $393,057.75. Um, then two invoices from Martin Lawler. Um, one for sewer in the amount of $836.05, and one for the water department in the amount of $1,008.55. Um, so any any questions? Well, uh, Tom, where, why don't you give us a quick report on DN tanks, because that's the biggest one. Uh, sure, uh, that's the, just their normal uh, invoice uh, for the month of June. It's uh, payment number three, um, larger than the first two, obviously the amount there gets us uh, to a, a percentage with uh, paid to date, including this invoice would be about 46%. Um, the bulk of the work was basically uh, getting the tank constructed, the walls, the floor, uh, the roof. Um, you know, the form work, getting that all uh, concrete poured and that, that was generally the, the bulk of that work. Okay. So, that, that's where um, we stand on that. That's, uh, the tank is eligible for some reimbursement through DPH loans, correct? That is correct. Um, we're still waiting for uh, the IUP, um, the uh, IOP, I forget what that stands for now, um, interim uh, funding obligation, the uh, IFO. Um, once that's set and signed, then I could submit all of these payments to DPH for reimbursement. Okay. So basically everything we've been paying out, we're going to get, we're going to recoup back from uh, the grant and loan program. Okay. So uh, I, I think if I could just interject, um, um, Eric sent me an email and I forwarded to Matt and um, I believe Lisa, he wants to set up a meeting in two or three weeks to uh, sign the documents. So um, we're already, you know, setting up those items so that we can get reimbursed. Okay. Just, just like basically the, the, the health department's approval process is they need to get from me my request by the second day of the month. And if so, then they'll cut us a check by like the 20th of that month. So 
looking at the calendar. If we can get this done the last week in August, I should be able to put my request in in time uh, for September, and then we should get that check cut by the end of September. All right. Tom? Tom? Yes. Tom, is that 46% uh, of the cost or 46 46 cent, 46 percent of the uh, work done. That is 46 percent of the total uh, contract. Okay. So they're almost halfway through. All right. Okay. Any other questions on the invoices? I I, I did have one other explanation on the National Water Main Cleaning Company bill. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I know the last time we had one, the total amount of the contract exceeded what was uh, authorized. And it, it basically entailed a change order, uh, which was a balancing change order where some of the units, we didn't actually use all of them. We came in under on certain items. We came in over on certain items. The big item was the traffic control, um, if you recall. And um, I hadn't gotten that pre-approved before we uh, authorized payment. For, uh, for the last um, invoice. So I wanted to just make sure that uh, I put that forward. Um, the 8,340 and 84 cents includes additional invoices received from Bethel PD for traffic control. So I wanted to throw that out there now that that's part of that balancing change order. And uh, you know we, we basically exceeded the amount of what was estimated for the traffic control. And, and that's the big item on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Did we did we have a contingency on that project? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, we did not because there was no um on the projects that we've been getting on the water side with the uh, drinking water um, loans and grants, they kind of crank in a contingency. This one we were doing out of pocket, so we did not include any kind of contingency on that. Although I yeah. will say that. Um, my, my budget for that project was on the order of 350000 and the bids all came in well under. So even with the total amount now being, uh, with this invoice, 285576 we're still under what I had originally budgeted for it. Okay. Uh, we, we need to look at that, maybe uh, doing some contingencies on some of these other projects. Um, okay. We can talk about in the future. Okay. All right, any other questions for Tom? Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve those invoices as uh, as presented. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? Uh, is that one abstention? Abstention, all right. Okay. okay, so four ayes, one abstention. All right, moving on, uh, new business. Uh, first order of business is uh, the um, Eleven unit development, nine Goodhill Road. So I will turn the floor over to Mr. Mazuko and Mr. Draper. Good afternoon. For the record, Mike Mazuko, professional engineer. My office is in Danbury, representing the applicant for this proposal at nine Goodhill Road for eleven two bedroom multifamily uh, proposal. And I will just share my screen. Pull up the mapping set. So has everybody seen that? Yes. Okay. So an outline and heat on this map here, which is basically the GIS map, shows the property outline in red. And Taylor Avenue is, is down here. That's where the, the water, the existing water line is somewhere in this location near, I think, 70 Taylor Avenue. Yep, you're right on it, Mike, right there. Okay. So the what we'd like to do is extend the water down to Good Hill and up Good Hill and then we would extend it across the entire frontage. You can see it's an odd shaped thing that wraps around 11 Good Hill. So we would extend it all the way across. The sewer lines are already in Good Hill and there's a manhole uh, and, and I'll just go to the next map because that shows that in more detail. So right here is an existing manhole and we would just run into the site. We did change from clean outs to manholes as requested by Tom. 
And we do show just this in this section here, the, the water line across the front of the site. The fire marshal did request that we put a, a hydrant in the site. So we did show a hydrant down here in the island as you just come into the parking area. And we showed a separate line for, for that as well as for the domestic supply. And we did show a, a, a valve and meter pit out by the road. Just assuming that that, you know, that hydrant would remain private. As some, town, some towns don't like any private hydrants, but you know, we can work around those details. But for right now, that's, that's, how, we, that's how we drew it. So the, the, the property is in the water service area as identified on the town's mapping. And so what we would do is we would get a root survey done and then you know, just formally design the water main extension. But at this point here, we're just trying to get through P and Z before we uh, do, you know, make that expenditure and pull the trigger on that part of the design. So that's sort of what we're dealing with in terms of public utilities. Uh, what size uh, maintenance are you running into the hydrant, uh, the, the service and for the sewer? Well, the sewer, we're, we're planning on running a six inch line off of the existing manhole. And as far as the water, we'll see what's, Good Hill Road is a dead end road. So I imagine it's probably gonna be an eight inch water line. Typically we run a six inch for the hydrant, but we'd like to see what kind of numbers we have in terms of pressure and, and capacity. And, and that's gonna determine what size line service lateral, but I imagine it's probably gonna be around a two inch domestic supply line. Uh, what's the length on the sewer from the street to the your first manhole there in front of the building? Those are no more than 300. We have two, I have two manholes. Okay. So I, I have one here at a high point in the driveway. Then I have another one in the island right here. Okay. Um, is, is the building going to be sprinklered? No, it's not proposed to be sprinklered. Okay. And, and I believe the fire marshal has, uh, has looked at that, correct, Mike? I believe so. He didn't make any comment about it. And I'm not sure if it was an either or, but we had no intent on, and I don't think we're required to sprinkler the building. And I think with that, the, the other option was to extend and put a hydrant into the site. Yeah, I, I believe if you had separate units on the second floor versus the first floor, that might have required it. But I think these are like kind of like townhouses. Yeah, two, there are two stories. Uh, you know, each, each unit is vertically. There's no yeah. units over the top of any other units. Right. So that's why I think it does not require to be sprinkled. Okay. Tom, this is Tim Draper for the record, 36 Ham Patties West. You're correct. Okay, I believe this is, uh, this is an informational report. There's no action item required uh, this evening, I, I believe, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, mo most of these developments, um, you know, we've asked the developer to come in and make a presentation to PUC so they have an idea of, of what's coming. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, as most of the time, then there's, there's a permitting process, which we'll then deal with in terms of water permits, sewer permits, sewer allocation. Um, in this particular case, um, you know, we're gonna eventually need a water main uh, extension agreement. And as Mike indicated, you know, we'll need a design. And, and, and so I think the developer will be back before PUC to, you know, kind of hammer out some of those details and approve, you know, some of those details as well as the agreement. Okay. 
I have a question. Um, who's going to install the um, sewer and water lines? I don't know if Tim is going to chime in on that, but at this point, I don't know if anybody's been chosen to do that. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom, explain that the. the uh, can you guys hear so me? That maybe not so much with the sewer, but the water. How that works with the town in terms of the, I guess the estimate, cost estimate, who pays for it, who chooses the contractor. So I, maybe believe Tom, it's, I believe we've got something in our rules about that, don't we? Yeah, the, uh, Paul, the, um, the water main extension policy indicates that, you know, we would prepare the estimate. Um, the developer would pay that up front. Uh, we would we would hire the contractor. We would make the payments to the contractor, um, and basically, you know, deal deal with it from that aspect. So that that's how we have it written up. As far as like the sewer line, the sewer lines are in the street, so the sewer line on the property would be handled by the developer's uh, contractor, as well as the water for our specification, correct? Aspect. But the water main extension, the, the yeah. policy spells spells that out the way I just described yeah. it. But let, let's go back to the sewer. Uh, this is per our specifications as to what type of materials and size of piping, correct? Correct. Yes. All right. <clears throat> okay, great. Uh, does anybody have any other questions for Mr. Draper or Mr. Mazuko? No. Not at this time. All right. Very good. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for the presentation. We appreciate it. Uh, Tom will keep us uh, up to date on any other uh, approval details as we go through the process, but thank you very much for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Uh, moving on to new business item number two, proposal for design services for the 2021 water main replacements. Tom, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, I included in the package a proposal from Wright Pierce to do the next uh, water main design on the streets that we had previously you know, authorized um, and that's included in, in the packet. So this proposal would be for design services to the health department for approval all the way up and through the bidding process and to the point where we're signing a contract. Similar, in, so very much so in, in uh, how we've handled the last uh, series of water main extensions. Okay, so this is for the design process, right? Correct. Okay, so you need a motion to approve uh, a budget of 37850 correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, now, to Rich's point, do we need a contingency at this stage or not until we get into construction? Well, the contingency for construction would be after this process. We would, okay. This would that's get us the plans and the specs. This would get us all the DPH approvals. We'd go out to bid. And then from there, that's when we would be getting the construction uh, estimates. And when we get into a construction contract, I think that's that's really the contingency I think you're looking for. Okay. Which again, right. if it's a DWSRF project, which this will be, it yeah. will already include like a 10% contingency. Oh, okay. okay. Or 5%, I forget which. All right. All right. All right. Um, how, uh, how does this compare with um, uh, Ray Pierce's price from the last project they did for us? It's actually a little bit less, uh, Rich. I, I, if I recall, I didn't look it up, but I think the last one was about 40,000. And I believe that would have been the, um, uh, the project uh, that we just are going through now with um, uh, Earth Movers. And the one prior to that with Grasso was in that, I think 35, 37 uh, ballpark. So this is right about where, the, where it, it should be. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, well, I'll put a, I'll put a motion on the board. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, Marty. Has anybody else been asked to submit a proposal? We've gone through this before. You know, I've got nothing against Wright Pierce. I think they do good work. But, you know, to keep going back to the same well over and over and over again, I think it's important that we at least try to get another price from somebody else to see, make sure that they are in the ballpark. And I don't know why we're not doing that. Well, Marty, we, we did do that on the um, on the three projects that we just got approved through DPH. Um, we went through that qualification based selection process, mm -hmm. and that was for um, the um, construction admin on the tank, 
um, right. on a bunch of design work um, for the Bergstrom well, which included, you know, the, the preliminary engineering report. It included water main extensions. It includes the uh, water treatment plant. Um, and then the third project we went through that. Did it include this? No, that one, that was specifically for those three projects so we can get the engineering work approved um, while we already had the construction work approved. Have we ever gotten any proposals from anybody else for this water main extensions? No. How come? We've been using Wright Pierce. They know our system. And I kind of just had everybody like submit proposals on these other engineering projects. Wright Pierce came in with the, uh, with the best rates. I think every once in a while you got to throw a punch and you got to bring somebody else in and take a look at it. I don't think I don't think this is fair to the citizens of Bethel. I think that they should be given a wider range to view who's going to be submitting bids and who's going to be doing proposals. And I've said that before. Like I said, I've got nothing against Wright peers. I don't have anything wrong with what they do, but I just don't think it's fair to the rest of the citizens of Bethel that we keep going back to the same well over and over again. All right. Well, I certainly agree with you on that, Marty. I, you know, part of the reason for hiring uh, Tom was to be able to bring some of this perhaps in-house and also to have better control over what the outside engineering costs are. So I agree with you completely on this. Well, is it too late to uh, ask for other bids? No, we, we haven't we haven't approved this, so I would say Fine. no. Well, the, the only problem about it is that uh, it's out now that what Wright Pierce bid on it. I don't know. Does that matter? Marty? You're muted, Marty. Yeah, I think that would be a distinct disadvantage to, to Wright Pierce at this point. Yeah. I just think that in the future we should okay. try to bring in somebody else, get a couple different things, it doesn't have to be real complicated. I mean, not like Matt knows, not like what we're going through for the solar panels on top of the roofs of the schools, which is a nightmare, that RFP. But I mean, something like this, I don't think is that difficult, where we could put it together with a couple of pages and be done with it. That's, I'll get a couple of quotes, and you know that way everybody gets a fair shake to see what's going on. I, I can certainly do that, Marty, on the next go around. Yeah, I would. Specifically, we kind of got, you know, Wright Pierce to sharpen their pencil and sure. they, came in, they came in better than the other engineers that, that submitted as well. So, no, I believe that. I just said that, you know, we don't, it's just all we see is Wright Pierce now, Wright Pierce, Wright Pierce, Wright Pierce. And I think that we need to bring somebody in every now and then to take a look too, see what else is out there. That's all. Okay. Good point, Marty. Uh, possibly in the future, we should look at um, putting on a consulting engineering firm for a specified period of time after which that goes out for bid again, rather than on a project by project basis. But we can, yeah, we can look at that. Yeah, we can look at that in the future. Yeah, sure. yeah there's, a, there's a way that you can bid out like an on call engineer and you specify right. what kind of services you want them to do. Right. All right. So we're going to proceed with this, correct? I'll put a motion on the floor that we approve the uh, request for 37850 not to exceed for engineering services for the 2021 uh, water main uh, upgrade project. Is there a second? Okay, Paul seconded. Rich also seconded. Are there any other questions? Any other comments? Hearing none, uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that carries. Thank you very much. Um, Tom, you're still up. Director's report? Uh, my, my director's report really for this uh, meeting is going to be our, uh, uh, their, our PUC capital project status. So All right. that's pretty well, much what I have on the table for today. Okay. Well, uh, we'll go ahead then because that's, uh, that's up next anyway. Okay. Uh, first project is the tank. Uh, as I indicated, the walls and roof were installed. They, uh, they finished coating the exterior, so that's complete. Um, 
the, the main uh, crew that's been there uh, uh, constructing the tank has got some work they're going to finish up this week, including the interior piping um, and some miscellaneous work, including the ladder and the plaque. Um, and and uh, w once they're done with those tasks, really the, 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 the bulk of the work remaining is the electrical, the instrumentation, uh, a bunch of site work, including the drainage and the water mains and the landscaping. Um, at this point, their schedule is showing a, a November 2nd as their, uh, their uh, latest proposed end date. So we're getting close to the end. Um, I, had, I had two items to add to that. Uh, at the last meeting, we talked about adding a hydrant uh, on that line uh, that's gonna feed the tank. Um, it, it is not on the plans. Um, Kelly and I talked and I think we can go ahead and uh, uh, propose to the contractor that we could provide the materials for a hydrant and, and then have them give us a proposal to basically, you know, install the labor on that. Uh, the second thing that we talked about, um, and actually as, as Kelly and I had talked to Marius, he thought of uh, perhaps adding an emergency connection between the 12 inch line that's gonna feed the tank and the existing eight inch line that we just installed on Long Meadow Lane um, with, a, with a valve in between the two that would be normally closed. What that would provide for us is, is a second way to feed the tank if the 16 inch main that goes through the woods that comes up uh, from town to the tank, if we ever uh, you, you know, had that out of service for any reason, we can, use this exist, we can use this emergency connection to be able to get water to and from the tank coming from uh, Nashville and up Briarcliff to Longmeadow. And again, it would only be utilized in an emergency, but I think it's a pretty good idea and would give us some flexibility. Um, again, as Kelly and I talked, we thought we could probably provide the materials required and then ask the contractor to give us a quote on the, uh, on the labor to install. So I, I bring those two items up for any comments or questions. All right. Any questions? Yeah, Rich. Uh, uh, I was out on the site and uh, uh, talked to uh, Tom about it. And uh, he brought that up and it sounds like it's a good idea for a minimal amount of money to have a, a, a safety, uh, um, if we something happened to that line that we can still back feed the tank. So it uh, sounds like a, a good thing. My only question, uh, Tom or Kelly, is there a valve down on the bottom of Chestnut that they can shut that section off? Yeah, there's <clears throat> there's two of them. There's one right where the main goes into the woods, and then there's one in the corner in Nashville and Nashville Extension. Okay. Uh, plus, we're, plus, we're going to surround the connection on Long Meadow on both sides of the 16 and at the 12. So, and and then there's also a valve where it comes through the woods out to Briar Cliff. So, it it would just have to be a little bit of planning, you know. So we had a scenario if we ever had to do it. Um, the only thing it would include would be to shut down the um, the, the booster station at the bottom of Briar Cliff to do it. But th this would be something that will probably never be used, but it's a good precaution to have. Yeah. To change how you sanitize lines or have to maintain them? What's that? Does it change how you have to maintain the lines or sanitize or anything? No, I don't think so. Um, it's it's basically just going to be a, the, a portion of closing some valves. Um, that main that goes through the woods, as far as we know, is well over 100 years old. And some of it is actually exposed to, you know, you, you can actually see 100 feet sticking out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, you showed it to me once. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, as for sanitation, it, it'll have water in it. It's still running. We're just going to be reversing it. So it wouldn't be really sanit uh, sanitizing the main. My only question is, do we exercise the valves? You know, if you say it's not going to be used, uh, we usually run into problems when these valves are not exercised. Yeah, well, that, that would very easily be put on a, you know, a maintenance schedule. Um, there's one main, there's one valve right on um, Nashville Extension that we're going to find out when we have to do the shutdown for cutting in the valves. 
Uh, and I know that valve has never been touched since I've been here, and I don't think it was 30 years before that. But we do know it operates. We just don't know how well it shuts down because we did operate it just to make sure it, 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 uh, it moved. So, so uh, Tom or Kelly, there's money in the contingency for that, right? Uh, yeah, there is, uh, Rich. This would be something I think I've got to go back to the health department engineer to get him to approve that. Um, I, I think. But if not, we would just pay it I out think, of. Exactly. I, I think it's worthwhile to approve if he thinks that maybe that's a just a betterment to the system and really not part specifically of the project. He may say, you know, that it, it's not approved, but. I think the cost of the materials that we would be able to get, you know, on our own, and I think the uh, the labor that the contractor would need to install it would, if it, so if it wasn't part of the project, I, I don't think it would, if it's out yeah. of our pocket, it's, it's going to be a big number. Okay. You want a motion to uh, approve the extra work? If, if, yeah, if you're so inclined, I could, I could, yeah, yeah, do a motion and then we'll, uh, we'll follow through with the contractor. Uh, I'll make a motion that we add the uh, extra hydrant at uh, metal, uh, metal Lane and the cross connection, uh, emergency cross connection, if, if ever it's needed, or wherever you want to word it. I'll second it. Do we have any ballpark on what the price is going to be? I think you need. Uh, Kel, you probably have a better handle on the exact on the numbers. No, I've I've got the hydrant in stock. That's about twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, to do a wet tap, which would have to be a wet tap on EA, is probably another twenty five hundred. Uh, do you know I, I'm going to ballpark ten thousand dollars will do it now with the labor. Uh, labor wise, um, I I tried to set up an appointment with the guys from um, um, was a BMP, the ones that are doing all the site work and. He, he really didn't question any of it. I mean, it's going to be an added cost, but it's just going to be time. Maybe maybe a day's labor to do it all. Again, I'm just guessing at that, but I think I'm pretty spot on with it. So not, not to exceed $10,000 then? I, yeah, I think that's a workable number. Is that material labor, Kelly, or that's just material? I, I'm sorry, Rich, one more time. You broke up a little. Is, is that material and labor at 10000 I, I think material, I would say material um, alone is probably about 10000 Well, it, all right, so you need twenty. Yeah, I, I think that's a real high number. I think 15 would be a, a legitimate number, and, and I don't even think it's going to be that high. All right, not to exceed 15 then. I think that's fine. Is that okay, Paul? Yep. <laughs> okay, very good. And if, it, if we get his number and it's more than that, we'll certainly come back to you with it. Okay, um, so we have a... Oh, sorry. Uh, well, we have a motion on the floor to approve the uh, hydrant to cross connection. Are there any other questions on that? No. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead, Pete. No, sir. Bye. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Then I'll try your minds. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, go ahead. What else you got, Tom? Okay, next project, the water main in, uh, installation, the 2019 water mains. Uh, service work continues on Highview Terrace. Uh, contractor will be starting services on Mansfield Street, I believe, this week. And once he's got those done, he'll be on to Oakland Heights for the water main and, and service connections there. Um, the Bergstrom well, uh, Wright Pierce has received the data from the pilot plant vendor and uh, they anticipate getting us a draft report on the Bergstrom uh, project uh, by late August, early September. And as far as the generators go, um, I've reached out to the vendors for them to order the materials and uh, you know, to get that work on their schedule. That's all. Okay. That's it. Great. Any I have other a question. question. Yep. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, on uh, the water main project, earth movers. Yes. Uh, over the weekend, there, there was some um, 
potholes or ruts. Um, they need to be uh, a little more uh, proactive on uh, filling in uh, washouts, and especially with the storm coming tomorrow on Wednesday, they need to be uh, on call to, you know, fix any of the, the holes. And were they uh, planning to put um, temporary patch in? I think probably when they're done with all the services, they've got one more service to do on Highview, um, and Mansfield they haven't even started yet, but there is a couple couple good sized washouts on Mansfield. I reached out to the um, to the foreman this morning, told him I wanted those filled in before the storm comes in. Okay, all right. Uh, keep track of after the storm or during the storm for him too, please. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, utility supervisor report. Kelly, you're up. Um, since we last met, uh, we've, I've had two service leaks, one on our side, one on the customer side. They've both been repaired. Other than that, the system's pretty tight. On the sewer side, I've reached out to uh, COVAX to uh, coordinate with uh, McVac and the Godwin Pump Company to take care of the wet well to uh, get that cleaned out. So that's basically a scheduling thing right now. But uh, other than that, um, I think it was last Thursday, I finally came back from the COVID um, isolation that I was on. Um, so the guys have been, you know, taking care of business and getting things moving. Okay, good. Okay. All right, any questions for Kelly? Paul Street, the pumps cleaned up. They're, they're, they're cleaned up, but the big thing is getting the, the heavy stuff that's going in there, Paul, once once I say this, this when we put it on bypass and get it clean, um, but they they periodically have to have to take the um, take the pump apart and go in through the volute and get all the solids out. But they're maintained it on a daily basis. Okay. Quick question on hydrants: How many are out of service? Eight. 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 And will it be seven next week or? Possibly, but I'm going to stay with my eight just to, <laughs> just to stay where I'm at. Kelly, what about flushing the uh, hydrants out, especially up here on the hill? Yeah, it's not a good idea now with the with the um, with the heat and everything. Uh, Tom and I we've gone back and forth on it. Plus, with our issue there on on uh, Greenwood Avenue, uh, it's possible in the fall we'll get them done. Okay. Yeah, with peak demand up, Paul, I, I wanted to uh, not do it in the middle of the summer. Okay. We're, we've our, our wells have been at 100%, 20, an average of 20 hours a day. So there is, you know, the usage is up. Plus, yeah, again, with the COVID thing, a lot of people are home. Uh, but it's, um, well, we don't, we don't drop to 70% until the middle of the night, and it's only for about four hours. All right. All right. I, I have a couple questions. Go ahead. Once for Marty, uh, any uh, results on that property on uh, Benedict Road for the subdivision about the sewer allotment? You're, uh, you're muted, Marty. Muted. Can't hear you, Marty. <laughs> Can't hear you, muted. The sun's shining here. I can't see it out of my screen. <laughs> Benedict Road. Uh, which one is that, Rich? The the subdivision that the um, Demarco I think is going to do in there. Yeah, it's Barry Connell's old property. Uh, Twenty nine Benedict, I think. Yeah. And what's the question again? <laughs> the the sewer allotment. Are they going to have to pay us money to hook up into those sewers or? Because if I remember right, I did, I did look it up and what it said was that it could be subject to in the future being reallocated. But, but the problem, Rich, if you remember, I, now it's coming back to me, I talked to you about this. One of the problems is I don't know how we were allocating the sewers back then. Yeah. It doesn't, I, somebody's got to tell me what that is, then we can pass it on. But right now, I haven't said anything to anybody because all we have is the notice of the assessment that says if in the future the property subdivided, it's subject to future assessments for the for basically for the new lots. Yeah, that's, that's right. Tell me, 
What size? So I, 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 I think the developer needs to know there might be a cost associated with, with that property. Yeah, well, so I don't understand why I can't find anything that says, and I know it was discussed over and over again, um, what the assessments, how the assessments were going to be based on, you know, but I don't, I haven't been able to find anything. It's like that. Can you, you know? can you check out what he, the assessment was for that property and we can maybe go from there. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, that's easy to do. That's, that's a matter of record. It's, it's recorded in the records. Okay. If you could check that out, I appreciate it. All right, my uh, second question is for Kelly or, yes, or uh, Tom. We talked about that pressurized tank up to Briarcliff there. Uh, do we need to have uh, Meredith look at that? You know, if whatever we can, if we can solve that pump from going on and off a uh, hundred times a day, it certainly was going to help the pumps. I'd like to look into that. Also, yeah, I, I think we can we, we can probably Kel, if you think we can maybe do an experiment with that. I don't know if we're able to maybe get a uh, like a temporary hookup before we, you know, kind of come up with a final design because I think we have to probably put in a vault in order to get that done, Rich, and on a permanent yeah. basis. <laughs> and, you know, by the while the contractors out there working in on the tank, that would be the ideal spot to put it in that area there. So, so if we check that out, and then my third question is, what's going to be the future of Chestnut Ridge Reservoir? Are, is when we get that tank installed, are we going to shut that plant down? Uh, you know, we've <laughs> talked about it, but uh, now I think it's to the point we need to start make some planning and uh, about it. Well, what I thought, Rich, uh, was uh, we get the Bergstrom well field and, and the treatment uh, facility online, get it into service, uh, kind of determine how it operates, how we want to utilize it. Um, it's one of those where you've got a public water supply there. I wouldn't necessarily rush into getting it abandoned until we truly know that we have no need for it. Part, part of the planning process with the state health department is they look at a 50 year horizon for your average day and for your peak month and your peak day. So I think there's a little bit more that has to be done before we get to the point where that decision is, is gonna be made. All right, well, but you know, it, it's in the foregrounds that we need to think about it. Yep. Okay, those were my three questions, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Motion adjourned. <laughs> you know, I got a question on that Conley's property. Uh, is that R30 out there? Um, yeah, I think it is. It is all R30, right? I think it is, yeah. I think because I think the sale allocation for that whole section, whether it was one, two, or three, or four, was due because of the R30 zone. Is that, is that correct? Might have to take a look. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know, Pete. Yeah, that was pushed through because of the limited amount of sewer that people could put deceptive repairs they could do on chimney heights. Yeah, well, had, yeah from, well, even, though it wasn't, even though it wasn't part of Steiner's subdivision, that's what all Steiner's property was up there, R30. And, but, and that's what forced the sewers to go out there was because people... Yeah, it wasn't had, enough. They had to meet the MLS, minimum leach and surface area, and they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So they had a four bedroom house which dropped them down to a two bedroom. Right. So, we came ahead and we put the sewers in out there for R30. None of R40 property was included in that in that sewer allocation. So now you got property along Walnut Hill Road, right across from Weed Road, where this woman wants to put a, uh, a one family house in. Is she going to use sewer there or is she going to use septic? And that's an R40 zone. I'm just bringing it to your attention because that sewer was strictly for all R30. Nothing to do with our Ford. Yeah, I don't think that uh, across from Weed Road is part of the sewer district anyway. I think that the line goes right down the road. Yeah, because the sewer goes right down past Walnut yeah. Hill, all the trees, uh, the church there and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering, man. I just want to kick it around. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can I um, ask a curiosity question? Yeah. Just a curiosity. 
Tom, maybe you can answer this. I noticed from Wright Pierce's um, proposal, they're looking at a 12 inch line on Sealy Street, Rector Street, I mean. Yes. Rector Street. And that, I assume that's between Greenwood Avenue and, and South Street, uh, correct? Correct. What are the size of the lines on Greenwood Avenue and South Street? The South Street 12 inch line? I think that from there, we're going to go to the, uh, the pump station. That's more or less going to be like the pump suction. So you, you didn't want to restrict that. I think this is what they had in their overall master plan with that they put together several years ago. But th that's, that, that would be the reason that street's going to be bigger. Um, I'm not sure if the piece then along South Street to the pump station, Kel, is that, is that a 12 inch going in? No, it's eight. Okay. So that would be then the next piece to do, you, you know, whenever that got, got around to it. Okay. I just was curious. That's yeah. all. Uh, all right. They talked about running 12 inch down Greenwood Avenue too. Is that correct? I don't know on Greenwood Avenue. Actually, 10, it's 10 on Greenwood now, but there was discussion of putting a 16 down Greenwood. And 12 inch all the way down Greenwood Avenue. Right? Yeah, actually, it was, uh, I think they were, they were talking about a 16 because that's what we started with on Beach Street. Because you were concerned about the state resurfacing the roads and all the other stuff, and they were talking about trying to get that line in there before all that work was done. Right. Right? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, any other questions for Kelly? And hearing none, uh, that concludes our agenda, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, so moved by Rich, seconded by Dino. <laughs> and all in favor? Aye. 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 And that motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone.